Good afternoon. Welcome to a little bit of truth. <laughs> with Pastor Paul and Cindy. We're so glad you're with us today. Uh, we've been looking at prayer and the life of Joshua. We're about trying to inspire you, encourage you, and just imparting the life of Christ. That's what we're all about. And so we would love to have your comments, your prayer requests, and we promise we'll pray with you. Even if not right now, we'll pray for those prayer requests later. Yes. So why don't we open in a word of prayer? Sure. I'll do that, and I'll let you close, okay? Okay. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. we love you. We thank you for yes, the gift of Christ. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the gift of prayer. Every good gift you give to us, Lord, and we're so thankful for it. So be with us today. Let this teaching inspire, encourage, impart, Lord God, your truth. That will, Lord, bring us liberty, bring us freedom, bring yes. us, Lord, closer to the image of Christ in us, Lord. And, Lord, we pray for our nation. Yes, Father. We pray for peace for our nation. We pray for truth for our nation. Yes, we pray, Lord, that you'd shut the mouths of the lies. Yes. We pray, Lord God, Bring that revelation, Lord. revelation of truth, yes. reconciliation will come to you, Father, yes. and come to us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, why don't we begin, Lovey, with you? Sure. Go ahead. Well, I know one of your favorite things that I do, that... It's, you know how every marriage has a, a little pet peeves here and there, but every day during this whole COVID crisis, you know, I haven't been shopping, and I don't think half of America has been out in the mall shopping or doing anything. So I've been ordering a lot online. Amazon. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's always been exciting when there's a box at the door. Pastor's always like, what did you order now? Amazon Prime. <laughs> And, um, you know, I got tired of trying to find where my vitamins were and stuff like that. So I remember one day I, I, this huge box came and I'm thinking, what on earth is in that? I didn't order anything. What is in that? So I cracked open the box and there was two little tiny, big, huge box with two little vitamins packages of bottles of vitamins in this big box and I thought wow that's that's a really big box for just such two little little items and it got me thinking that's kind of like a lot of us a lot of us when it comes to prayer and it comes to our view of God we box God in and we we you know like like when I thought of opening that box, I thought something grand was in it. And it was these two little packages of vitamins. It was like, okay. But sometimes some of us box God in and what we think he can do. And the thing is, is God does his best work on the most ordinary days. That's right. When you're not expecting anything, mm -hmm. God shows up whether it's a call from a friend, an answer to prayer, uh, you know, it can be anything. But, but on the most ordinary days, the ordinary places, and in sometimes the most ordinary people, God does the most extraordinary things. And, um, you know, not to minimize, but, you know, when we think of some of the grand things, you know, we can think of in um, when... God parted the Red Sea. What a, I mean, can you imagine the magnificence of seeing the Red Sea just cut in half like that, just to have it split open? And then there's also, God takes care of every sparrow that falls from the sky. Like he knows every hair, and I have a lot of hair on this head. And we have a lot of sparrows in our backyard. And God knows how many hairs are on this thick head of hair of mine can you imagine god knows every detail and you know sometimes we have to remember god isn't limited by your view he's not limited it says in um philippians 4 6 be anxious for nothing and that that doesn't mean there's anything that's too big or too small but it says be anxious for nothing but bring 
everything to God in prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And, um, and you know what? When next time you think of putting God in a box, just remember, God is not limited to your view of him. You can't put him in a box. Mm -hmm. He can do exceedingly above all that we can ask or think. And uh, so today, whatever you're facing, whatever, if it's a, uh, uh, if you need forgiveness for an iniquity, you know, God promises in uh, Psalms 103 that he can forgive us and he can heal us of all our diseases. And in uh, Matthew 11:28, he says, come to me, all ye who are heavy laden, all you who are carrying him. Nothing is too small or big for God to deal with. And so remember that his loving kindness, Psalms 23, 6, follows you every day of your life. And you can't limit God what he can do. Amen. He does exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's how great he is. I think the verse keeps coming to mind that goes right with you. Isaiah 55, I think it's 7 and 8. My thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord, neither are my ways your, your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are God's thoughts higher than ours, mm -hmm. and his ways higher than ours. So if you're discouraged, if you think you're in a bind, if you think you're in a box and you can't get out, cry out to God. Yes. Cry out to God, and he will deliver you. Amen. We are in the life and faith of Joshua. Today is our 13th teaching. And how do we respond to when God speaks to us? And right now, we're saying that faith is divine, but we can respond in positive or negative ways. So there are human responses when God speaks. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And when God speaks, faith comes. And you got to know whether to doubt, fear, refuse it, unbelief, or believe. Take courage and submit to it. And right now, I'm talking about the human response of submission. Submitting to the authorities that God has set up into your life. That's one of the ways you want to respond when God speaks to you through the Word of God, through dreams, visions, the preaching, teaching of God's Word at church, online, podcasts. Mm -hmm. However God may speak to you, still small voice, even angelic revelation, however He speaks, there's a proper human response. So let me, first of all, as we're in our third teaching on submission, let me define submission to you. I said it a few weeks ago. Submission is simply acknowledging the authority of God or any other authority that he set up in your life. So there are different authorities that God has set up in your life. And let me just go through seven of them. God's authority, governmental authority, Civil authority, such as police, firemen, school teachers. Domestic authority within a marriage and a husband and a wife. Parental authority for the children. Parents are to raise children. Children are not supposed to raise parents. All right. Spiritual authority of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, deacons at churches and uh, teachers. And, and then lastly, the employer, employee authority that we are to submit to our employers as submitting to the Lord. So, God's speaking to Joshua to take the promised land, and God has a promised land for every one of us. The promised lands are the tomorrows, the plans to prosper us and not harm us, to give us a, a better hope and a better future. And in order to do that, we have to listen to what God is saying, and the divine faith will come when he speaks, and we have to respond properly. So today, I've entitled this third teaching on submission, uh, called Submission Involves Patience. Last week, I said submission begins with preparation. you got to prepare to move when God says move. But today, I want to talk to you about patience and why people hate submitting, why people don't like that word submission to authority. So let me read the text to you, all right? The text is in Joshua 1, 12 to 15. And I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm going to read the gist so we can respond with submission. Now, God said through Joshua, spiritual leader, 
to three tribes. To the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua spoke. You shall pass before your brethren armed, armed for battle, to take the promised land. And help them, help them, until the Lord has given your brethren rest as he gave you. God helped you, now you help them. Go help them take the possession of the land, then the Lord shall return to the land, shall return you to the land of your possession and you shall enjoy it. Now, sometimes when God speaks to us about our promised lands and we begin to take the promises of God, the tomorrows, the brighter days, the cadence that he has for us, once we reach that promised land, God doesn't just say, sit down and enjoy it and don't worry about anyone else. He said to the two and a half tribes, Reubenites, Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh, he said, don't enjoy it yet. Go in with your brethren and help them lay hold of their tomorrows. And sometimes we have a wrong idea of Christianity that we think, hey, I just want to enjoy what Christ has given to me. But that's not the Christian way. God wants you to help others reach their promised land. And that requires patience. You don't get to have all that God wants you to have right now and just don't worry about anyone else. It's just Jesus and me. I can't stand it when people say, oh, just Jesus and me. Can I tell you something? It's not Jesus in you. It never has been. It never will be. The Greek word for church is ekklesia. It means called out ones. It's always in the plural. It's never singular. You are not in a church unless you're with other people. And there are over 30 commands in the New Testament that have to do with one another. And you can't claim Jesus and me and obey those 30 commands of love one another, forgive one another, pray for one another, comfort for one another, uh, unless you are in a church with other people. So can I encourage you, learn to submit to what God is saying and don't live a selfish, self-centered Christian life, but help others reach their promised land. In Galatians 6, verses 2 to 3, Paul tells the church this very important thing. Bear one another. It's yeah. not about you. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? The law of love. It's the 11th commandment. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, just me and Jesus, no one else, he deceives himself. Don't be deceived. Don't think the church is you and Jesus alone. Understand, as God said to Joshua, to the tribe of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, you have a responsibility to help the other tribes, the other people, go into their tomorrows and by faith conquer the promised land. So important that you hear that there are other people on the journey of Christianity that are stumbling. They're not as mature as you. We're all at different places. And it's so important that we help them. And the abundant life and the abundant flow that is flowing in your life, you've got to help other people reach that. That's the true church of Jesus Christ. And you say, but pastor, it doesn't seem fair. Well, sometimes it's not fair. It's not about fairness. It's about the law of Christ. It's about love and helping other people. And you say, well, what if people take advantage of me helping them reach the promised land? Well, that will happen. There will always be people that will abuse your generosity. And they say, well, it just doesn't make sense because I know some people in the church. You don't do it for them only. You do it for the Lord. Yeah. And here's the truth. There are people that say, I don't pray, I don't read the Bible, I don't give to the church, I don't get involved in ministry, I don't fast, I don't even go to church every week, but you got to help me. Yeah. What do you do? You help them to the best and you be honest with them. You tell them the importance of praying, reading the Bible, going to church faithfully, giving, getting involved in ministry, the power of breakthrough, fasting and prayer. And so it's important that we understand, am I my brother's keeper? 
Yes. yes. We have to help out others. And it takes patience. It took patience for the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the Manassehites to help the other tribes go in. Now, we're pastors. Part of our responsibility, we counsel broken people, people that are just sin and the devil has destroyed their life. We counsel people that uh, marriages are on the brink of divorce. Maybe they are divorced. Maybe they're single fathers, single mothers. And it's not always pleasant. I don't always enjoy doing it. Why do you do it then? I bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Yeah. The law of love. And then I guard my time and make sure I don't burn myself out. Yeah. But I do it because I submit to what God wants me to do to bring the church into the maturity of the fullness of Christ. And so let me close by asking you this. Who are you helping in the church of Jesus Christ to lay hold of their promised land, their tomorrows? Yeah. Who frustrates you the most where you lose your patience? Maybe that's the person that God wants you to pray for a little more and help them lay hold by submitting to the law of Christ, the law of love. Let that faith flow through yeah. submitting to what God wants you to do. Help others come into the promised land. I'm not saying helping others come in who are rebellious and they want, don't want to hear it. You need to be a wise steward of your time. But pray and let God use your faith in you and patience yeah. as you submit to the law of Christ. Amen. And usually it's at the most inconvenient time yeah. that God tells you, go out of your way and do this or go to the hospital and see that person or um, can you think of an example that... Well... Uh, not all the time, but many times when God speaks to me, it, it will seem inconvenient to my patients. I may be on the way home from a church service, and then my wife calls me where I'm almost home. She said, so-and-so's in the hospital. Love you. Why don't you go visit them? I'm like, oh. It's not that I don't want to visit them. It's just like I'm almost home, but you know what? It's not about me. No. It's about the church. Yes. It's about others. Yeah. It's always about others. Bearing one another's burdens. Yeah. yeah. And so fulfilling the law of Christ. Yeah. You do that, you release faith, and God will give you more. Amen? Amen. So let me tell you a couple things, all right? If you enjoy watching us on Facebook Live, we also have a YouTube channel called Paul Height, H-E-I-D-T, and we would love it if you would subscribe, watch the other ones, Hit share, hit like, and hit the icon in the top right corner, which tells you every time we put a new video out there. The subscribe. Yep, the yeah. subscribe. So, And then if you like this one today, if it ministered to you and it inspired the life of Christ to teach you a little bit, knowledge, hit share on your Facebook and let others enjoy the ministry of the teaching of God's Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well... I don't see any prayer requests, but we encourage you, please send in your prayer requests. You can text us. Yeah, you can text us. You can put message. it here. Even when we're done online, we always go back and respond to every comment. Yeah. And we pray for every prayer request. And God's been answering prayers. Yes. He really has. So, but why don't we close in a yeah. word of prayer? And I'll let you do that, love you. Sure, I'll do that. Father, thank you for the word that you brought forth. That, Lord, I pray that as we expand our prayer and the, the things you want to do in and through us, that, Lord, we would bear one another's burdens yes. and that you would help us to slow, that, slow down in life and to, and to take the time to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying and that whatever ministry that you want us to do, that you would guide us into that work. Father, I ask, Lord, for each and every person that's listening, that you would pour your blessing upon them, whatever need they have, that, God, you would meet them, that you would show up in the most extraordinary way and answer their prayers. Yes, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It has been a pleasure. Yes. 
being with you today. Thank you for watching us at A Bit of Truth. Yes. May the Lord bless you and continue to guide you to hear his voice today. Yes. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.